Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. In Hong Kong, people who need to change their sex, a man to a woman or a woman to a man, have received transgender treatment from the public health system since the 1980s. And Hong Kong society now understands more about them and their right to transition into their chosen sex. But producer Alex Solon finds it still takes much courage to come out to family and colleagues. And transgender fulfilment is hampered by red tape. After five years of preparations, Jacqueline and her business partner Ada are ready to launch their business. Providing cosmetic services for weddings and television shoots. They both share a dream to own a company. For Jacqueline, age 36, there's another motivation. She was born a man, and her ID card shows this. I think every transgender people may think that about job security and because some company may not like this gender change. While Jacqueline waits for surgery to change her sex, she's keeping her job as head of IT in the firm where she came out to her colleagues two years ago. I came out to office manager first. I wrote a very long email explaining my situations. I told her I won't change any job duty actually. But she'd be wearing female clothing and be called Jacqueline instead of Jack. I think that I, I should be a girl when I was six years old. I still remember when I tried to dress as a lady. One day, uh, my mother just came in the rooms with a lock and then she found that, oh, oh no, you dress like a girl. So I explained to her that I should be a girl. I don't want to live as a man anymore. My mother think that, oh no, just crazy. Some mental illness that I have some ghosts get inside my body. My mother doesn't like me anymore. And I'm very sad about this. Only my sister, I can talk about how bad I feel about my current body. When my mom discovered her ad, she threw away all the uh, stuff uh, that she, uh, for example, the, the dress and the um, cosmetics. I want to stop my parents not to doing this. Even though you, you throw away the, the stuff and she will buy it again. From the age of 13, Jacqueline started experimenting with female hormones, from birth control pills to male hormone blockers. It really make my emotion just like it's not stable. Sometimes I, I will be very sensitive, but I wish to be a girl. I know that family acceptance is very important. I start to, uh, to act as a good student, get scholarship, and then I get um, education abroad uh, in the United States and get a good job. Gradually, around 30 years old, and my parents accept this that even if I have transitioned to, to women, I can still perform very good in a society. Then uh, I'm not just like dressed uh, as a female, my inner character is just like a woman. I have to choose my life. At 35, Jacqueline finally saw a Hong Kong doctor to start a full transgender treatment, provided for free by the hospital authority. In fact, all people who receive a referral from primary care practitioner are all eligible to the sex to this service. They include transsexuals. People who have been very uh, unsatisfied with his or her current body shape, as well as their genitals, who like to have their genitals organs to be removed and reconstruct of the opposite sex. Transgender is actually an umbrella term that covers a lot of people who have some discomfort about their own gender. They may transit in some, I mean, socially, or take some hormones to help them they, they, they appear more light to some neutral gender. But just getting to see specialists could take more than a year. This is far too long. And even when they manage to start to see the psychiatrist, because it involves a multi 
disciplinary approach, when they switch from one uh, specialist to another, they have to start and wait in another new queue. And this is a very frustrative process. This is Viola, a 20-year-old information technology student. She's been accepted by the hospital authority for treatment, but she's waited half a year to see a psychiatrist and was told she has six more months to go. She was born male, but thought of herself as female since the age of 15. Walking down the street, I envy the girls. Why wasn't I born a girl? Looking at them, I really want their bodies. I've tried on women's dresses and felt happier in them. She says she wants to start looking more feminine while waiting for therapy, so she's buying female hormones. Maybe when people who want a sex change reach 30 to 40 years old. Their body's regeneration will slow down. Even if they take drugs, they won't look much different. Some people might have feminine traits, but as long as they are not distinct, you will still be tagged as a lady boy. So I purposely tried hard to pursue a feminine appearance. I searched transgender groups on Facebook and found some introduction to drugs, so I know what meds to take. What normally a, a public will look at a person, whether they are male or female, is from the external appearance. Giving the, the uh, person with the opposite sex hormone will change their hairs, the subcutaneous fat, the muscles. After taking estrogen and anti-androgen medication for a year, Viola is already noticing the changes to her body. The proportion of fat in your body will shift downwards to the hips, or upwards to the chest and cheeks. While hormones can enlarge breasts, there are also side effects. The anti-androgens I'm taking right now are cheap stuff. It will have the side effect of your body producing more potassium that will raise the risk of coronary occlusion. Since she isn't seeing a public doctor yet, she has to pay for her drugs, 80 Hong Kong dollars a day, and she has no prescription. Luckily, I found two pharmacists willing to sell the drugs to me without prescription. So now I can keep buying and taking them. The hospital authority records 133 patients got gender identity treatment in 2015, double the 58 in 2010. After years of therapy, some patients might choose gender reassignment surgery. 16 patients in Hong Kong did in 2015. Dr. Albert Yoon was Hong Kong's principal sex reassignment surgeon. He built up a specialist service at Rutenji Hospital. We recommend that the original, most of the original sex organ have to be removed and also have to construct the organ of the opposite sex. Jacqueline wants the most advanced surgery fully functional female sexual organs. So I have uh, uh, passed all the review, and then I get the letters from the local doctors and I can have the surgery anytime. Because she's met the most important requirement of having come out at home and in the workplace. Because surgery itself is irreversible. We require a whole year of real life experience of the opposite sex in uh, the community, in the family. Only with factory assessment, they will, rec will be recommended for surgery. But in Hong Kong, I have to, to queue up for one year. In Thailand, I have more selection, to more, more uh, doctors to, to choose from, so I can uh, expect better results. 
at a significant cost. It's more than 130,000 yeah, in Hong Kong. Yeah, it's a huge number. The delay is because Dr. Albert Yoon recently retired. His work is being reassigned to a new gender identity disorder service at Prince of Wales Hospital with another surgeon. This person is not dedicated to the, to the service and, and she could only allocate a small portion of her time to do a sex reassignment surgery. And therefore when people get to that stage, even trying to see her could take over a year. The time when uh, Dr. Yun did uh, SRS in Hong Kong before, the wait time is much less. The hospital authority expects the full service to start in 2016-2017. Jacqueline's decided to have the surgery in Thailand this autumn. Then she'll be able to change the gender on her Hong Kong ID to female. I want to have my boyfriend, I want to get married, and then I just have to form a very warm family, and that's my wish. Coming up, a landmark court case wins transgender people the right to marry. This is the case about a woman being treated as a woman and being entitled to marry the, the boyfriend of her choice. But some people refuse to undergo surgery, so they can't change the ID card. If someone challenges me and say that, well, if you don't do bottom surgery, you're not a man, I would say that, well, even if I do bottom surgery, I'm a lot like the ordinary man. That and more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Pearl Report. A landmark court ruling in 2013 entitles transgender people who have changed their ID to marry a person of the opposite sex. But Alex Solem reports Hong Kong's immigration department has responded by forcing them to undergo risky surgery before issuing them with gender-affirming ID cards. Casper was born a woman 37 years ago, but ever since puberty he struggled to accept his female body. When my breasts um, glow, I, I, I have that sense of uncomfortableness. I always had that thought in my mind that I want to take that away. And so when I realised that I'm a transgender, I understand why I have that kind of uncomfortable um, feelings. At the age of 32, he started taking hormones so his body would look more masculine. At 35, he decided to have his breasts removed with the full support of his parents. The days before I um, do the surgery, I'm still, I'm so nervous because like, it's part of my body after all. But I always remember when when I was so struggling and I um, I took off my clothes and I I was like um like this. And then I saw the, um, the two triangles in my breast and, and I said, okay, um, you have to go. And I just could go and do the surgery. Casper did the surgery at Ratanji Hospital after two years of therapy. Oh, finally, I can just like this. I can just pose like this. Otherwise, I would just always like this or trying to hide it somehow. I don't know why. Yeah. So it's the sense of at ease that that I think confirms that I've made the right decision as a transgender. He doesn't see the need to undergo further surgery. I'm different from other transsexual people. Some of them do like every surgery. Some of them don't do surgery. It really depends on the level of uncomfortable feelings to their, with their bodies. I think it's the right choice for me to go through transition, to use hormones 
and to do the upper surgery, and even not to do the bottom surgery. Previously, transgenders like Casper would be able to change the sex on their Hong Kong ID cards if they obtained the certification from a qualified surgeon. For many years, Dr. Albert Yoon was the only surgeon in Hong Kong who carried out such procedures. It's a spectrum of surgery. It can cover a, a whole part of the bodies. There's no definition, medical definition, about what to mean by a sex reassignment surgery. Before 2012, the requirement for changing sex on ID cards was more flexible. Dr. Yun would allow somebody who closed their vagina to issue a ID as male. The immigration department would just actually take it and then, and then issue the new ID. And what I know uh, recently is this is no longer acceptable. Due to the landmark court case, W versus the Director of Immigration. This is a case about a woman being treated as a woman and being entitled to marry the, the boyfriend of her choice. As long as transgenders change their ID card, they can marry someone of the opposite sex to their chosen gender. Due to this added privilege, immigration authorities ask Dr. Yoon to clarify what makes a man become a woman or vice versa. We will decide that that surgery, which will be accepted by most of the patients and carrying a reasonable risk or complications to the patients. On the other hand, they are also being, will be accepted by the public that the surgery has been done, such that they will agree that the, their sex should be changed to the other, the other side. So the new requirement for a woman to change the sex on her Hong Kong ID card to a male is removal of the uterus and ovaries and construction of a penis or some form of a penis. Some form of a penis can simply mean The surgery will be making this enlarged uterus to make, make, to make it more prominent, to look like a small penis. But Casper is not willing even to do that. I've heard a lot about the risks they may have urine problems, and there's a chance that even you put that extra bit to be the, um, the penis, maybe the blood or the, um, um, the nerves don't connect well, and it's just that, and you have to take that out. The main problem that I have now as a transgender is I can't change my ID. People will be confused when I have to explain and prove myself. They take me as like I'm carrying my girlfriend or my wife's um, um, ID, doing things for her. But he's identified as a man in his British national overseas passport. Because under the gender recognition ad in UK, I can be recognized on my BNO that I'm a man now. Because I got the proof from my psychiatrist that I identify as a um, man um, and that I have been living as a man for certain periods, I will always fight to be recognized as a man. For example, my right to every bank, um, every company. Asking them to address him as Mr. in writing. I would take my money away from those banks that ignore me. Solicitor Michael Vidler believes Hong Kong should follow Britain's Gender Recognition Act, make surgery optional and allow transgenders to be able to get an ID card, their lives and their acquired gender without daily humiliation, to get a library book out, <laughs> to go into a public swimming pool. To, and uh, you know, we're, we're seeking to change that. He's working on a judicial review to challenge the immigration department's policy. I'm very comfortable and confident that um, my inner self is, is a man. Transgenders denying their inner self could have dire consequences. Candy, 46, was born a man but wants to be a woman. I hid my problem until I was in my 30s. I used to exercise to make myself bigger, more masculine. But it was no use. In my heart, I still felt differently from other men. Candy grew up on a public housing estate in Kowloon. She used to own several hot pot restaurants in Shenzhen, where her first wife lived. After they divorced, she dated a Hong Kong woman there. 
I was already dressing femininely. She said at the time she didn't mind. I felt she was really good to me, so I decided to be with her for companionship. After we had a baby, I started a photography studio in Shenzhen. The couple got married. But I didn't feel in my heart the sort of passion between a man and a woman. I didn't need sex. In my home, in my room, I always dressed femininely. Mainland homes are rather big and family members didn't notice. When Candy came out openly as a woman, the marriage buckled. She wanted to change me, but couldn't, so she turned against me and went out to have fun, returning home only in daylight. Suddenly, I got home one day and found my whole family had vanished. The wife had taken the 10-year-old son and gone back to her family in Hong Kong. Two years later, a lawyer's letter from Hong Kong came to me in my Shenzhen studio, urging me to start divorce proceedings. Candy agreed to the divorce. Three years later, an altercation with a client landed her in prison, on suspicion of unlawful detention. Because I was the only one dressing femininely in a prison for male convicts, I was tormented miserably. Many of the men hadn't seen a woman for ages. They touched me and decently assaulted me when I walked by. I attempted suicide once. Candy was acquitted, but only after a six-month detention. After my release, my son suddenly said he didn't want to see me. I haven't seen my son for almost a year now. Not even a phone call is allowed. Candy returned to Hong Kong, hoping to stay with relatives while putting her life together. My sister, all of them think I've disgraced them. So they just refuse to let me go home, just let me sit a while and throw me out. So Candy moved to a shelter for the homeless and started looking for work in sales. In job interviews, on appearance alone, interviewers thought I was very good, very nice person and work abilities and other aspects. I'm okay. But once I showed them my ID card, they found excuses to reject me. One year after returning to Hong Kong, she's in the queue to see a psychiatrist so she can eventually have the surgery and change her ID card. Do I really have a choice? You're forced to do something you dislike, pretending for a lifetime. Would you be happy? No way can you be happy. The me inside the shell is a soul. I feel I have a female soul. I've persisted for so long and given up everything just for being myself. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be aired on Monday, Tuesday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck and good health.